After spending more than 23 years on death row, a 76-year-old man became the final person to be executed in California, and he had some truly chilling last words. Clarence Ray Allen entered death row at California's San Quentin State Prison in December 1982, having been convicted of three counts of first-degree murder with special circumstances. He was sentenced to death for ordering the murders of three people in 1980 while serving a life sentence for another killing. Allen was initially sentenced to life in prison in March 1978, having been convicted of burglary, first-degree murder, and conspiracy. It all came about as a result of a planned burglary in 1974. Allen had planned a burglary of Franz Market in Fresno, California, in which he solicited the involvement of two men who worked for him at his security guard business. He also arranged the help of a young woman, Mary Sue Kitts, his son's girlfriend. He planned for Mary to get the keys to the store and its burglar alarm from Brian Schletikitz, the market owner's son. But after Mary told the young Schletowitz that it was Allen who had robbed the market, he decided something would have to be done about the young woman and arranged her death. He was arrested and sent to Folsom State Prison. While he was in there, Allen plotted to kill the people who had informed on him and made it so he served time in prison. While in prison, he got to know Billy Ray Hamilton, and three days after Hamilton was paroled, he was picked up by Allen's son at the bus station where he asked for weapons to carry out the ordered killings. On September 4, 1980, Hamilton and his girlfriend, Connie Barbo, went to Fran's market and bought some meat from Joe Rias. Mr. Rias went into the storeroom with Douglas White, and soon Byron Schletowitz and Josephine Rocha made their way into the storeroom followed by Hamilton, who was brandishing a sawed-off shotgun. Barbo followed behind as Hamilton ordered the four to lie down, then told Mr. White to get up before taking him to the freezer. When they entered the freezer, Mr. White told Hamilton there was no safe there, so Mr. White returned to the storeroom with the other clerks. Hamilton then asked young Schletowitz for the keys to the safe, and they were slid over. Hamilton ordered him out and told Barbo to watch the others, at which point she pulled out a handgun. Hamilton and the young Schletowitz went to the safe, where Hamilton was told by Byron Schletowitz he would give him all the money. Mr. Rias later testified that when the pair went to the safe area, he heard shuffling and a bang. It was later discovered that Hamilton shot the market owner's son at close range with a shotgun. Hamilton made his way back into the storage room before asking Mr. White where the safes were kept. He didn't know, and so Hamilton shot him at close range in the chest and stomach. Another shot was heard, and it was later learned a shotgun blast at close range killed Josephine Rocha. Hamilton attempted to kill Mr. Rias as well, but he had covered his face with his arm. The shotgun blasted his arm, blowing off most of the tissue and shattering bones. Hamilton and Barbo checked the other three victims were dead before fleeing the scene. Hamilton was later arrested as a suspect in a robbery in Modesto, and assault with a deadly weapon. When officers searched his belongings, they found an address book with Clarence Ray Allen's name in it. Due to the listing of Franz Market and the names of some of the victims, investigators began to believe there was a connection with the murders and the burglary of Frank's Market for which Allen had already been convicted. After an investigation, inmate Clarence Ray Allen was arrested. He was convicted of three counts of first-degree murder with special circumstances, and was sent to San Quentin's death row on December 2, 1982. Twenty-three years and one month after arriving on death row, Allen was executed by lethal injection at San Quentin State Prison on January 17, 2006, at 12.20 a.m. He was pronounced dead 18 minutes later at 12.38 p.m. Before his death, he enjoyed a last meal of buffalo steak, KFC, all-white meat, fried bread, sugar-free pecan pie, sugar-free black walnut ice cream, and whole milk. For his final words, he issued a statement which read, First of all, I'd like to say how good the last meal was, how much I enjoyed it, and how much I love my family and friends who have stood by me all these years. I'd also like to thank my friends from Europe who have written to me and my spiritual advisor, Richard Williams, one lady, Henny Rip from Holland, and another lady from Italy, Christine Kaufman, who I gave an Indian name of Morning Sun. And she's been that to me and all of the inmates on death row that I'm leaving behind that they will be joining me one day. One good friend I've got that I hate to leave behind who's been my neighbor for 20 years in Ward Weaver.
and all of my family that was here to visit me during this period, I love you very much for being with me during this time. He then went on to declare his last words. He said, My last words will be, Hoka hey, it's a good day to die. Thank you very much. I love you all. Goodbye. Allen was the second oldest person to be put to death since the U.S. Supreme Court reinstated capital punishment in 1976. By the end, he was a blind wheelchair user with his lawyers calling for clemency due to his health and age. Due to his health conditions, prison authorities arranged for Allen to be brought to the execution chamber in a wheelchair and lifted onto the gurney for the lethal injection to be administered. Patricia Pendergrass, sister of victim Brian Schletowitz, told ABC News, His mind is still very clear. His mind is just the way it was when he was 50 years old and planned this heinous crime. He knows exactly why he will be taken into that execution chamber. Brian's family issued a statement after Allen's execution, saying, Over 30 years ago with the burglary of the Kleetwitz family business, Ray and Fran Schletowitz and their son Brian were drawn into Clarence Allen's destruction of lives. Clarence Allen took the life of Mary Kitts with premeditation and was sent inside prison walls. We all thought we were free of him. He sent an assassin to kill Brian for testifying against him. Two other young people, Josephina Rocha and Douglas White, died because they were working with Brian. Clarence Allen destroyed the happiness of the Schletowitz family, the Rocha family, the White family, and the Kitts family. It has taken 30 years from the burglary of Franz Market to this night for Clarence Allen to receive his just punishment. The Schletowitz family wishes to express gratitude to the men and women who stood by our families to ensure a just end of Clarence Allen's destruction of lives.